because I'm live. Hi, Rachel. How are you? I am just getting things going here. So give me one minute. There we go. I think we're all done. We are. How are you, Rachel? So I'm just chilling for the past couple of days, yesterday and today. Me and my sister have been just sitting in here sewing. And I've been working on this quilt here. Hey, Nan. Oh, geez. My, uh, my video is flashing in and out. Focusing. i got to take get rid of autofocus. How are you, Nan? Goodbye, autofocus. There we go. Now it won't do that. Oh, thanks, Rachel. Love having you here. So Jeff just made me a coffee, so I got my coffee. I'm working on my quilt blocks. I'm anxious to get these done so I can start on my other quilts. And then I'm going to quilt all of them. I'm just not at that stage of quilting right now. I didn't want to move all my stuff into um the kitchen again to the quilt machine because i just didn't feel like it <clears throat> so i'd rather get this done because i have to move my sewing machine and everything there so i just thought i would just chill for a while and keep sewing and sewing hi moon glow so let me just bring up my chat because I can't read it from the where it is at. It is like pretty far away. Come on. Jeez. A ton of commercials. It's all you see. Here we go. Let's turn down the volume on that. <clears throat> and there we go. Now I can see chat. How are you, Moonglow? <clears throat> so I've got this many done, believe it or not. And I printed two extra ones out on regular copyright paper. And they had no problem doing them. So, And they worked out to be exactly the same. So this one's done on a copy paper. And this one is on a copy paper. And it does rip off because I checked it. I wanted to peel it back to make sure I can rip this paper off without damaging the stitching. So, and it just tears off just as easy as the other paper. So, maybe. That one. Well, they're all like that anyway. So, yeah, it's going to work just fine just fine so that's what i'm working on what are you guys up to hi paula hi sharon hi yvonne yeah i know you miss my a lot of people miss my beading videos one of these days i might make some beading videos i have all the beads i could restock everything and i haven't touched them they're sitting in boxes I haven't just, I just haven't picked it up and I don't know why I can't get into it. I probably should, but I can't do a beading video live because I don't believe I can get close enough in, um, in a live video as I would on a pre-recorded one because you got to see up close what I'm doing. Or it's just really not worth to do a video. So that's my story. Yeah, I had Chase today. And yesterday, I just didn't feel like going live. I just didn't feel like it. So I didn't go live. I just sat here with, at home with my sister. 
and we just worked on these quilt blocks. She's working on her rag quilts. Hi, Kathy. Oh, hi. So I'm just working on these. I have 42 of them to make, and I feel like they're going to take me for forever to get these made. They're very time consuming. Well, that's cool. Pin just went right through my ring there. Yeah, these pineapple blocks are a lot of fun. Uh, they are. They're time consuming, but they are a lot of fun. A lot of fun to make. And I enjoy making them. I tried to see if I could do them differently, but now I can't because I've already had so many made. Um, I was going to put a different color in every spot, but I can't do that now. So, next time around. So I need to go to number 18. Yeah. Um, I did sort of show it the other day when I finished it. I took a picture of it, but I haven't posted it yet in the group because I have to take a picture with my phone and I just haven't laid it out on the floor again to do that because that's what I have to do because it's so big and I have to stand on a stool to get the whole quilt in the, in the video, in the camera because it's so big. I can't see it to snap the picture. So it only takes a part of the, the picture and it looks dumb. So I have to do it on a stool or a chair. But it's not done. Yesterday I worked on getting all the backing ready. So the backing is sewed, iron pressed and cut to size. And I did the binding. So <clears throat> this is my binding. So I've already done it and wound it all up ready to go. So this is all the different leftover two and a half inch pieces I had left over. So I did all the bindings, sewed them all together. And now it's just waiting to go on the quilt. So I just wound it on this wooden spool of a rickrack. Just so it doesn't get all over the place. But that is the uh, binding for the quilt. And I haven't got to it yet. I haven't quilted it. I'll quilt it when I quilt this one. We'll do the two of them at the same time. Well, not at the same time, but when I take everything and go into the kitchen to use the quilt frame. And I've been thinking of what I want to make for quilt marks, quilting designs. And I almost want to use my rulers and do quilt patterns. But I'm so scared to do that because I'm scared I'm going to mess it up and not do something right. So I got to pay attention to more quilting tutorials on quilting with rulers because it will be nice. But again, that is extremely time consuming using quilt rulers. Very time consuming. But hey, Yeah, be careful on the stool. <laughs> I'm going to get Jeff to stand on it because he's 5 foot 11. He's almost 6 feet and he can't even get the whole quilt in the camera from where he stands. <laughs> so I'll get him to stand on the stool and take the picture because then for sure he'll get the whole quilt in it. Because the picture I got is kind of, it was late at night. Not late, I mean it was dark out. It was supper time and it was already getting dark. So it, it's kind of a crappy picture. So I want to get one of it kind of with natural light so you can see the actual color in it. And I'll take up close one of some of the spots on it just so you can see that. But it is, it is gorgeous. I'm telling you, I just can't believe I threw that together in two days. And if I do quilt patterns on it, I think that's going to look phenomenal on it. I really do. So yeah, this is all I'm doing. Just chilling and working on my pineapple squares. I want to get these done 
before I dig into another project. And I'll show you the next project I'm going to work on for sewing is a is two of them actually. One is called Sunday Pillows and another one is a tote. And I'm kind of excited to make a tote because they're going to be doing away with plastic bags here. So it would be kind of nice to make our own reusable uh, bags. Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, guys. So, yeah, I'm going to start making some recyclable bags. Or not recyclable, reusable bags, tote bags. Because most stores now won't even offer you a paper bag. They tell you you have to bring your own re your own bag or boxes. And I'm not sure I want to carry my groceries in boxes. Because that, to me, is just too heavy. They could stack a lot of stuff in boxes. <laughs> so if you don't bring bags of any kind, re reusable bags, <clears throat> you're carrying your groceries out one at a time. And I hate doing that. So I thought I, I'll show you the pictures of what I'm making. <clears throat> I'm going to make a few of them in my own because I have a lot of fabric in my stash. And I know they don't take a lot of fabric. These totes don't have zippers or anything like that. It's just a plain tote that you would use for groceries. So let me grab it. That's not it. So, this is the tote here, but what I'm going to do is box these corners because I may have to adjust it because it's finished 16 and a half by 16 and a half. You could actually make it 18 and a half by 18 and a half. You can make it as big as you want, but to me, I think the size is good, nice strong handles and boxing these corners. See, the corners on here are not boxed. So... N not a lot of things will fit in here. So if you box the corners, you're going to have a nice square bottom, rectangle bottom. You can load a lot of stuff in that bag if you do it that way. So that's one of the ones I'm going to be making. It'll have this fancy pattern on it. And then the Sunday Best Pillows. I'll be making those two Sunday Best Pillows. They're super, super cute. <coughs> this is the fabric for the Sunday Sunday Best Pillow pillows, super cute. One's called Walkabout by uh, Sherry and Chelsea, and this one's by Corey Yoder, and it's called Strawberry, and it's really pretty fabric. I love this. Where is it? Nope. Nope. Oh, right there. That's really really cute. Love it. Isn't that pretty? So yeah, we'll be making some pillows, Some light, there'll be a long one, and there's a square one. It's not a long one, but a rectangle and a square. So um, yeah, we won't be just doing <clears throat> one kind. And then my tote one is these, but, and I can't really give you the pattern because these came in the sew sampler box. And of, of all my sew sampler box, this is the only stuff I intend to make out of it. The rest of the stuff went in um, storage, or not storage, it went into my stash. This is called uh, two and a half by two and a half. I forget what these are called, origami packs. And they're just little two and a half inch squares. So I'll be using these up, get rid of these, because I don't know what else I would use these for. By Woodland Rose, by Jira Brandwig. They're super cute. This one's got a little bit of metallic in it. And I don't know if you can see it in the camera. But I'll hold it up. And you can see the little gold metallic there. So I don't know if there's a lot of metallic in this fabric. I think not. Oh, there is in here in the red. There's metallic in there. The gold spots. 
and that's the tote fabric so as you can see it does not take a whole lot of fabric to make these totes so we're going to make a bunch of these you can make them whatever size you want however big you want i think they're super pretty so that's what i'm using for one of my totes but i want to make a few of them and keep them in my car so when i go grocery shopping now i don't have to worry about bags but i do have to worry in a sense because I don't like to put meat in cloth bags. So I would definitely put some kind of plastic bag inside of my grocery bag so I can put my meat in there and then put it into the bag, zip, or even put them in Ziploc, bring my own Ziploc bags and put them in there because I honestly don't want meat dripping into my cloth bag because I don't want to have to wash them every time I use them. So yeah, they're not even offering plastic bags. There's one of our stores that's already starting that. And Trudeau, our prime minister, said that the, the use of plastic bags and plastic bottles and all the plastic stuff, plastic straws, uh, have to be omitted in Canada in the year 2020. So that's the year that people are going to be... Uh, getting rid of all plastics in Canada. And I'm telling you, do you ever try to drink from a paper straw? Oh my God, I got the eebie-jeebies just thinking of it. But the paper straws, oh, they're so gross on your lip. I went to A&W a couple months ago and they gave me a paper straw. I couldn't even, I had to throw the straw away and just open the cap and drink it because I could not stand drinking from a paper straw. So, I'm going to stock up on straws and keep all my own plastic straws. And I guess it's mainly for the environment to prevent plastics from going in the oceans and seas and stuff like that. Waters, lakes. Because a lot of fish, a lot of fish. Oh, Nan, I hope you feel better soon, hon. I'm sorry, you're not feeling well again, still. So yeah, you, they show you pictures of all the sea, the sea people or sea things, fish eating plastic bottles, plastic bags wrapped around them, animals getting caught in the plastic grocery bags, stuff like that. So they're gonna omit it. And I think that's a great idea. I mean, I really do. Just at least give us friggin' paper bags for our groceries. That's all I ask, you know. But there, there's some grocery places that aren't giving you nothing. No paper bags. No nothing. So, but boxes. If you don't have bags of your own, you're getting boxes. So I have a lot of bags in my car already. But I want some homemade ones. And that'll just make people in the grocery line jealous of your bags, you know. <laughs> Be like, where did you get that grocery bag? Oh, I quilted it. Hey. Where did you get the shopping bag? I quilted it. I made the quilt box and made a bag out of it. Hi. So that's a good way to get yourself admired in a grocery store. So, yeah. You could do that. That's fun. It will be fun. All right. I've done this another block. I get always impressed with these blocks when I get one done. Because I always look at them and think, yep, I look at the previous block and I go, oh, wow, yeah, it's really different. <laughs> it's different than the other one for sure. I don't know how different I got all of them, but I might have a couple of duplicates in here. You never know. I might just have the fabric uh, switched around a little bit. That's about all. But other than that, I tried to make all of these different. And, you know, that's just not possible to do at all. So this has been fun, fun, fun. And I'll tell you, I don't have very many done. 
the amount of time I spent making these pineapple blocks, I sure don't have a whole lot of them done. Hi, Martha. Oh, that's a cool idea, Sharon. It's a metal ones. I'd have to check those out. I really will have to check it out. So I always iron the front and the back of it. So that's another pineapple quilt done. And it is different from my other one. So this is how many I've gotten done. So let's count. We're going to have a paper tearing party. I told my kids two, three, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Woohoo. I'm not even halfway, guys. Not even halfway. Why does that one look bigger? Why? Oh, it looks bigger because it is cut bigger. I didn't cut this one very good. I'm going to trim this one off because it's not the same size as my other ones. It's a little bit wonky here. I guess it's kind of imperative to have them all the same size. Let's check that. Oh, that's much better. Trimming that off. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So I have 16 done out of 42. Not too shabby, I would say. So that's my next set of colors. So whatever's left in this book, that's how many I have left to make. I have to make. And I know it's a sad, sad affair, but I do have quite a few left to make. But they're not going to get done just sitting there looking at them. So they're not just automatically going to say, hey, I'm done. Trying to match this up the best way I can. Mm, looks good enough to me. As long as it's centered, sort of, it's good enough. So start with my number two. Number one <coughs> is this big square here. Number two is the next piece. How'd you, how are you coming along on your album, Martha? Some of these look the right way. Some of them look the wrong way. I just do what I can. Oh, shoot. That moved. Can't have you moving. attached my pin cushion to my garbage bowl because I just pinned it in there because I have somewhere to poke these two pins without losing them on my table somewhere so that's why that's there So yeah, I would have loved to have done all of these in different colors. I wished I had done them in different colors, but I did not. Like every single one of these that I'm putting on, all different colors. Wouldn't that look stunning? Going to work on it later. Oh, it's still sitting there. <laughs> good place for it, Martha. That's a super good place for it. Sorry I wasn't live yesterday, but I just, like I said, I was just chilling with my sister, taking my time, coming in and out of the craft room, uh, just doing a whole lot of nothing, but 
making these things. And then I had Chase today as a surprise. My daughter texted me at quarter to seven and said, are you awake? And I'm like, yes. And she said, can you watch Chase from eight till two? And I'm like, yeah, but why? And she said, well, I got called in to work and I, I want to go because I need the money to pay for my trip to Florida when she goes with her dad. So she's working extra shifts to pay for that trip. So I was like, yeah, I'll watch Chase. And he was such a good boy today. So I'm going to be down to only one computer in the next couple of days. Because Chase broke my main computer in the living room. And Dell, whoops. For the warranty, because it's got um, accidental warranty on it until 2022, um, I have to return the computer because it was it was it was dropped, it fell, and it got damaged. The plug-in for it just falls out. Where where it fell, it fell right on, like right where the plug-in is, and it bent the plug-in and busted the piece that the plug-in plugs into all in there. So I talked to Dale today, and he's like, we'll send you a box by Pure Later tomorrow. Pack your computer in there and ship it back, and we'll check it all out. Whoops. And if it's damaged, anything's damaged in it, they're going to replace it right there on the spot. Because I don't have to pay for that now, because I paid big bucks for that that uh, uh, extended warranty. So thank God for that, for accidental insurance. But I have to send anything that's accidental that you're claiming on your computer has to be sent to them. They don't send an in-home guy to look at it because they can't determine if there's any, like he said, the, the, the hard drive could be damaged and you just don't know it. So our guys are qualified to test everything inside. And if anything's broken inside, we can get it all replaced for you at no cost. Well, of course it's no cost as I paid you an arm and a leg for the, the warranty on it. But I'll tell you what, it's worth it because if I would have had to replace all that parts, I might as well just go bought a new computer. So that's why Jeff and I always get the extended warranties on ours and the, the accidental damage. So if something breaks on it, they fix it. So I'm going to be without my living room. This computer that I'm on right now, I'm going to be without this one. Um, probably not tomorrow. The next day is purely because the box will come tomorrow. I'll pack it in there and then they'll pick it up the next day. So after that, and then it'll be gone for anywhere from five to seven days. He said that they'll need to repair it and send a new cord. I guess they're going to, they want the cord too, because they want to see what happened to the cord. So I said, okay, take it away, fix it, because it's broken. My little baby Chase, I guess his foot got caught in in the cord, and when he yanked his foot, or his, or his toy did, his fire truck did, the whole computer went down. <laughs> and I was in here, putting stuff away in here when I heard crash. And went in the living room and it was my computer sitting upside down on the ground. I was like, no. Oh, no, Chase. What did you do? And then he's standing there going like this, talking up a storm. I never understood a word he said because he was talking, trying to explain what happened, I guess. Because <laughs> he didn't want Grandma mad. Well, I couldn't get mad at him. Because I knew it was probably his fire truck. The wheel got caught on the cord and it was my fault for not watching him because I was in here putting stuff away. <laughs> well, I didn't think he would get into anything that at eight o'clock in the morning, but he did. Hi, Queen Bee. Oh, that's wonderful, Bee. Oh, sorry. Yes, Moon Glow. Yes. These here are exclusive. Sorry about that. And that's wonderful, Queen Bee. I wish I was you right now. Yes, these are called the Pineapple Blocks, and they are exclusive to Fat Quarter Shops. The only place you can buy them 
There's no other quilt shop that sells these. Although, you can go online and you can download free pineapple uh, blocks, but they are square in the middle and they don't have the diamond. So I'm not sure how you would work that out because I looked for a few of them with the diamond and it, and it wasn't there. And then you would have to go to Amazon and buy uh, foundation paper for paper piecing. That's what it's called and it's pretty cheap. You can get 100 sheets for $19. So you would run that through your printer and print it off. Or you can go to Fat Quarter Shop and order their, their 6 inch squares when they're finished. Or you can get the 12 and a half inch block. So there's the 6 and the 12. And I like it because it's the foundation paper is this kind of paper that you would use for your paper piecing. So it just makes it a lot easier. And of course, you're going to use a 1.5 stitch, millimeter stitch length to make uh, the paper rip off even easier. Because the tighter the stitch, the easier it'll tear off. And that's just a little tip that uh, Kimberly gives you that owns the Fat Quarter Shop that she uses the, the very tight stitch, 1.5 millimeter length stitch. And it does make it a lot easier to tear the paper off. So like I said, we're going to have a paper, paper ripping party at my house <laughs> where people are going to come, my kids, and they're all going to rip paper off the backing of my blocks because I don't want to do all that or I will end up doing it sitting on the couch one evening I'll probably sit there me and my sister will rip all the paper off you just got to be very diligent on doing it you can't just sit there and rip tear rip tear because you may rip your stitching and you're not going to like that because you can see the process of the steps that this takes and if you start ripping stitches it's not going to be easy to sew those now so just letting you know but yeah you can download pineapple quilt patterns for free online I did and the box is square it's still pretty though even though the box is not uh, a diagonal like this diamond shape it's just square in the middle it's still pretty and actually if you go to a YouTube place called so very easy which is SEW very easy she's Canadian She's a quilter and she has a lot of tips and tricks. She does a pine, not too long ago too. So if you go search her videos, not too long ago she did a pineapple quilt and she gave you a link to where you can get a free pattern. So um, check her out too. But she uses the, the same ones I'm using from Fat Quarter Shop when she's doing the video. But she also tells you where you can get free ones too. And I think she said she put a link in the box. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure she did. And her name is under So Very Easy. And she does give a lot of tips and tricks. I learned to do the, um, what's it called? The C, the C-shaped uh, quilting, the free motion quilting I did on one of the kids' quilts. I learned to do that from her. So I followed her tutorial on quilting C's and it was super easy by following her I, I had no problem I can't say my quilting was perfect <laughs> or like hers I'm sure it wasn't even close but hey I still got the job done and you can't really tell all my mess messes I made to oh wait a minute I did a boo boo put the wrong one in that's not supposed to be green. Shouldn't be color on color. Whoops. And I don't suggest tearing this off. I suggest picking it off. Pulling, cutting your threads because you rip that paper, you could do a nice mess of damage to the paper on the back. <clears throat> so we will use you after because I got a little ahead of myself here and was hoping I was finished all the white, but I was not. So I'm just picking off the threads. Get off. Now, that was supposed to have a white one. 
not that color. I'm still working. You gotta have four of each. I don't know what made me grab a color. Jeez. Well, that's great. Talk to you later, B. If that's what you said, TT. Ow! It's rare that we hang out. <laughs> well, then you enjoy yourself and have a wonderful lunch. All right, now I sewed the right color on. Silly wabbit. I've done that a couple times already. Believe me, it's not the first time. Patsy's in the house. And she's sewing too. Did you get your fresh coffee with your milk, Pats? What? Did you get your fresh coffee with your milk? No. Why? Uh, no. What? I don't know. I just drink it. Yuck. I know. Ew. <clears throat> Why don't you warm it up and put milk in it? Uh, oh, I only got a little bit left, and I'm thirsty. Oh. All right, so this is the last white one. <laughs> At least I've done it right. And I've already got these two pins bent, so I'm not going to get new ones. I'll leave the bent pins. I'll leave them bent. All right. Now I'm going to iron these two. So now we need to go to eight, nine, ten. Now we can start our color again. And my garbage bowl is super handy for this. Super duper handy for this. They're going to be nasty to get out. And that's my sister sewing. make the quilt as big as you want now the pattern I was following came in my sew sampler box and it's this one here see it it's completely square I don't like square I need things in length so what I did is I made one two three four five six extra pineapple blocks so this here originally would have taken uh wait one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen so six times six is thirty six this would have taken um thirty six pineapple blocks and there would have been so that's a square quilt size fifty three by fifty three inches not that big believe me so one paper pack would have been enough but I wanted to do one extra row so I could have an extra row. So it can be have a little bit of length 
I'm not one for square quilts. I don't like square quilts. So my, my quilt's going to be a little bit, one row longer, and that's why I needed two extra pages. So what I did is I photocopied this in uh, my printer, and I just scanned it and copied two pieces off. So I already did them, so now I have my 42. I didn't buy another paper pack because I didn't need to. Uh, I bought this already. It was in my house, so I have every right to copy this as many times as I want, as long as it's for my own use. And I am. I used it for myself. So 53 by 53, that is what you'll get. If you want to make it a little bit longer like I did, then you need two extra squares, and you could do exactly what I did. Just copy it on your scanner, your printer, and print off two sheets. And they print it off perfectly the size I need. So that worked out perfect. So yeah, it's, uh, it's not enough papers, that's for sure. That's if you like small quilts. I don't like small. How did you ever guess? You guys want to saw it. What is that? Yeah. So if you're gonna buy that, make sure you buy this ruler from Fat Quarter Shop. It's called Add a Quarter Plus. It's a pink ruler. Type in their search box add a quarter. You'll see this ruler, you'll see a bunch of other clear ones, and a longer one. This one is perfect for this size. If you need the 12, the tw see it's got a lip on it. I don't know if you could see it in the camera, but it has a lip right here. This lip hooks on to your paper to give you an exact quarter inch when you're trimming off your paper like I've been doing here. So. Like right now I'm doing number 13. So this is also very thin here and it's meant, this is meant to go onto your paper piecing to fold your paper piecing over and it's almost completely flat. And then you will take that ridge side of your ruler and you'll place it down here up against your paper. See, it slides up against your paper and it gives you an exact quarter inch to cut. So, you know, and it also, you're protected from your rotary cutter as well. So you're going to cut straight up like that. And there's all those pieces cut off. And there's my exact quarter inch seam. So when I fold this over and add my last piece here, I'm going to sew this on the line and it's going to give me exactly a quarter of an inch seam, which is nice because you don't need all the extra bulk in there. So you see, if I sew on this line where I folded, I'll be sewing on this line. There is my quarter inch seam. Perfect. I ain't got to trim anymore. Some people do their trimming after they sew it on. I don't like that because I like to sew my piece on and see that it's lined up and it's straight. And that's all there is to it because see, now I have my exact quarter inch seam following that line. You can see my little sewing right there. So when I flip it over, that part gets hidden now. It's perfect. That ruler is the handiest tool ever for this kind of paper piecing. Oh, you got one, Kathy? What did you get one of? A ruler? Did you get one of these these pink rulers? I didn't pay... Well, I paid for this through my... This was in one of my sew sampler boxes with the paper as well. So, yeah, I'm not sure what you got, Kath. So, I just done number 13. So, now I need to do 14. 14 is beginning of white again. So yeah, I like this for trimming as up your fabrics. It works perfectly for that. Just perfect. 
then you got a really nice perfect line you know got waist a big fat hem in there but again like i said some people trim after they sew they teach you at fat quarter shop to trim before you sew so i mean we're talking about professional quilters and sewers there so that's who i'm going to follow And it makes sense. It really does. Because now I don't have to trim that. Just flip it over and start on number 15 now. And you don't even have to worry about sewing a straight line. Oh, you got the print pink ruler. Isn't that darling? It is like the best tool ever for a quilter. I'm telling you. It is perfect. Even when you make, um, what do you call it? Uh, let's pretend this is if you made a half square triangle and you know how you you you've got you know you make the two pieces pretend these are two pieces here so you would lift up the one piece here you could put this right on your seam like this and cut off and, and you have a nice straight quarter inch seam line or you could do it with a ruler that'll take a while because you've got to play around with a big bulky ruler I usually don't use anything. I just hack it with my rotary cutter or scissors. Depends how big of a piece I'm cutting. Yeah. So once I get two sewed on, I will give them a press. to this one to 16 and I have a nice new blade in my uh, in my rotary cutter so that helps makes it cut really easy and I don't have to put any pressure in cutting Yeah, you don't have to worry about sewing straight because you have a straight line to follow. Right there on your paper. Just follow that line. You don't even have to worry. It's a lot easier. So, yeah. And that's about all. I'm anxious to make some tote bags grocery bags, whatever you want to call them. I have so much. Whoa, I thought it was, I cut my fabric like that. I was like, whoa, what did I do? Yeah, these pins eventually get bent because they are the thin ones. And uh, yeah. going through a bunch of layers so okay all right now we're getting on to uh, 18 is my next one so I'm on 18 and it's always a good idea to sew past the line into the next block because when you pull this up you can see your threads letting go right here, so they'll get caught in this seam here when you do your quarter inch seam. It'll get caught in there. And I always like to look for the front and the back. Sometimes you can tell, sometimes you can't. The only reason I could tell on this one is if you look at the purple flowers, you'll see white specks all over the purple flowers. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. There's white specks all over. There's none on this side. So that's how 
batiks are really finicky like that but that's how I can tell that that's the right side and that's the wrong side and I look for it to see those little white specks and sometimes you can see them and sometimes you can't because they're just not there non-existent And this gets, you get the hang of this because you're always working one across from each other. Then you'll move over to the next one and then you'll do the one right across from it. So it's super easy to follow. Like it's not hard to do this. And believe me, you don't have to sew a straight line to be able to sew this. It's super easy. So again, this has got white spots all over, none there. So you know that this is the wrong side up. And that's the side we use. <clears throat> and there's two done. I just love all these colors together, like the dark teals, the green, the light purples. Like, isn't that just beautiful? All right, <clears throat> we need 20. Wow, this one's loaded with white spots. I don't know if you could see them. Oh, I hope you can. Because I can't see it in the camera, but this one is loaded with white spots. And nothing over here. I don't know if you could see that or not. It's hard for me to see in the big camera. <clears throat> covered in white specks too so I'm glad that one gives you a chance to see the right the back from the front the front looks so pretty the back has got white spots everywhere <clears throat> and that's not supposed to be there <clears throat> Kathy when are you gonna start yours is what I need. how you go across each other diagonally that's how you do that you always work diagonally across you done this one you move across and do that one because that's from 22 to 23 that's how that works 
super easy to follow. And I'm telling you the white, I can't tell the right from the back and there's no way to even test it. I can't find it, so <clears throat> I don't bother looking for it. I mean, you could keep all these scraps, but oh my god, they're so small, I ain't keeping them. I ain't doing that. this block complete. So now you just take your regular ruler ruler and you cut it along the dot the not the dotted line the straight outer end outer line. So you're not cutting your inner line. You don't cut on this line here. The first inner line because you need that quarter inch seam allowance. So you cut on the the outside line. See it? Two lines. Cut on the in out the outside one. Was that Pat's? Oh. Oh boy. And then you'll have a nice pretty trimmed up square. All ready to be sewed together. You don't have to worry about squaring it up because you're doing that right now with this ruler. You're cutting it to its proper size. And the finished square should be six inches, I believe. So let's give it a little press. And let's give it a little clean with my rollers. Get some of the threads off of it. And I don't know how that got pushed up, but it shouldn't be there. That should be back there. All right. So there is this one I just finished. So if there's some long threads in here that bother you, trim them off. Some people just leave all these. These are just little threads here. They're not that long, but they still irritate me. They still bother me. There we go. So there, that that was the one I was working on, and that's the one I just finished. Totally different square looking squares. Just follow them up and have a paper peeling party. Hi, River. Um, <clears throat> 
Now I remember correctly, this so sampler box, it came with two, two charm packs. I didn't use these charm packs. So you need an additional four charm packs, including the two charm packs. But I remember I only had two charm packs or three. I don't remember now how many I had for this quilt. I had three. I needed three more. So instead of that, I had a jelly roll and I cut the jelly roll into two and a half inch strips. The only thing is I can't give you measurements because this is a pattern that was exclusive to the sew sampler box. But you will need four and a half yards of background, three and a half yards of backing, five eighths of a yard of binding. The only thing is, is that's for the 53 by 53. I don't remember what I used. So you do need quite a bit of yardage here. And your background yard yardage is your white. So I cut out, if you watch at the beginning, I know I cut off about four and a half yards of white, maybe even five, because I needed additional white because I made that extra row. So, yeah. You know what I don't see? I don't see. Oh boy, I don't know what I did for my cutting. Hang on. I needed some bigger borders, and I don't think I cut them. Oh, that's right. I was omitting the border and making... Never mind. I know what I was doing. I changed this whole thing up. This is going to have a four-patch border. Instead of their border, all my leftover two-and-a-half-inch strips... I'm going to turn these into four patches. So that's why I didn't cut that extra border. So this was left over from my charm pack. And I just cut some of this up. All these up to put in to make all I had. This is my inner border. That's my binding. This is my sashing. Now the sashing is what goes between all of your squares. So this here is going to go between each square. So you're going to put a sashing here and you're going to put a sashing here. You see? And that's how that's going to go. And then there'll be the long sashing here that should reach right across the whole entire row when it's all joined. So that's why I did, I changed it up. That's right. Cause I'm making a four patch border. I'm not making their five inch or six inch border. I'm making my own border. So that's why it's not going to be the same. So it's really hard to tell you And I'm glad I marked all of these because I would not have remembered what all this was for. Had that had not been marked, I would have been a big cuckus. Because I would never have remembered. So, yeah, there's that one done. I think that was a binding. <laughs> and I just chucked it out. Or part of the sashing. Silly rabbit. So you can make these and put together however many you want, whatever source, uh, sashings you want. You can do whatever you want. Just make sure you have the pineapple block quilt. Blocked paper. That's what you definitely need. You need this. This is most important.
So I just hold it up to the light and hope I get it right. If it's not right, then I just pull it up. There we go. Looks pretty good to me. That'll do. A little dab will do ya. And then you'll start off with your number two first. A nice fresh sheet. Oh shoot. Oopsies. That was not right. Oh, look what I did. Oh my God, I'm an idiot. Oopsies. And I need to move up my block. Because I think I hacked it off too much. So at least there's a quarter inch over there and a quarter inch over here. Oopsies. Don't do that. And I that's the second time I've done that. Yikes. So, oh lordy, I forgot to put my ruler out. Not good. So in other words, I cut it with my ruler inside the paper and I've done that already before. Not good. So I believe that's my next group. Yep, so let's see how this works, even though I ripped the paper, cut it off. And, oh well, long, as long as it sews, I don't care. But it didn't stay on the paper. Well, damn, guys. Damn, damn, damn. No, that's not going to be good. Shit. All right, let me just put this back over here and I'm going to stick a pin in it till I get the other one sewed down. My seam lines. Hold that down with the pin for now. There. Okay. Now I can't bring that one up, but that's okay. Just need to get it sewed on a little bit more. And I can't afford to waste this paper because I need every single sheet of it or I gotta print out more. So fixing my boo-boo. It'll be fine. It will be fine. Just don't get that caught. Oh wow. Oh I need new pins. I borrowed those two. And then I can take those pins out after I get this sewed down on all four sides. I'm not all four. So, not a good idea to rip your paper out. So now I do have to remove this one pin I need to turn that up according to the stitching. Okay. Put the pin right there. We're 
we're good. Now I need number four. So easy to do that. Now this one should hold it all down. So I need to be careful I don't sew over that pin head. I won't be able to see on the bottom here because I'm working from the top. Fine. We're okay. Now let's go this one. Remember, pull your ruler out. Pull your ruler out. Yeah, no choice but to make it a nice save copy. <laughs> I got no extra no extra ones of these and then I'll have to pull out my old printer again and print this off again on regular paper and I don't want to do that. It's a pain in the ass. So I just want to make sure no pins are going to hit my seam line, stitch line. So we're good. That one's safe in the arms of love. And my iron died. There we go. So it's, it's, I tacked it down by going over top of it into the next one. Into here, into eight. So the next one I need is six. So that's kind of part of it which is good because you can see I cut it out of there so that works out good and that will hold it in place too I cut pretty chunk pretty big chunk of paper out so <laughs> that was just dumb And it's fine. See, no problem. I fixed her up. Seven. So now you guys see if you make a mistake. That's the second time I've done that. I had to cut a new piece of this stuff because it wasn't enough on it to cover up the little triangle piece that it, I was trying to cover with that didn't work so I had to cut a whole new piece but I didn't cut my paper that time though this time I cut my paper off there we go Get this little pressing. Now 
Now we're into number eight where it was really cut. I'll be careful there. I don't undo it all. You can see the big chunk I took out of that. So guys, see how easy it is to fix mistakes? Easy peasy. Especially when it comes to quilting. And you know me, I used up all my leftover fabrics on everything. I made my cover. I used it in those bags. <laughs> like I don't, I don't have very much of these left over for scraps. That's for sure. go put Miku in his room guys I'll be right back give me a minute and I shall return see it's still absolutely perfect you can barely see where I cut it I'll be right back guys please bear with me
He does it every time I go live. He just gets super noisy, the bird. Really? He shut up for a few minutes. Yeah, I know he is. All right, so we did up to number nine. You can see nine is stitched. Now I need number 10. Number 10. put on our color see this is one that's really hard to see the front and back this looks like the back to me good enough Didn't work. Why? What did you give him? I went and petted him and talked to him for a minute. <laughs> what a little shit head. See, I cannot tell. This kind of looks faded. Maybe a little bit. We'll use that as the right side. And we'll give it a little pressy. There is a lot of wasted fabric in here. Oops, wrong color. That definitely is the back. Definitely. So it's nice to trim off all the extra. And you can make this with scraps, by the way, Kathy. You could just use all your scrap fabrics for these. Just make sure the piece fits in the area. And it's at least two and a half inches. I just finished 12 13 so 14 14 is not done that's the one you're going to do next so you can't lose your way Mm, 14. 
Something. There you go. Make it a scrappy one. They tell you that this pattern works great for scraps. And believe me, it does. You see all, all the waste. I don't appreciate all this waste. That's the only thing. Is all the wasted fabric. To get to that square size. So you guys can't even see my little boo-boo here at all anymore now because this is all attached still working out to admit to this gets really monotonous <laughs> after a while where you just want to quit and quit don't keep going because you'll never pick it back up again it gets boring and I'm not even shitting you I'm telling you the truth It's really boring. All right, I've just done 16, 17, 18's next. This is where the final color piece comes on. Very hard to tell with that one. I'm keeping my pins away from where I'm stitching because I can't see those pins on the bottom. did it again whoa caught myself almost <laughs> not again oh my god yowzers 
Hi, Karen. Hi, Mary. Have a nice time at church, Karen. I almost did that a second time on the same block. That's a nice chunk of wasted fabric. You add all these pieces up, it adds up to a great deal of fabric. That's the only thing I don't like about all this. I hate when there's so much waste. Like you can't even use them, they're too small to do, unless you want to sew a bunch of tiny pieces. I don't much feel like doing that. So all those tiny, tiny pieces. That is a great deal of waste. It really is. I always stick two pins in. Some people only stick one. Some stick none. So it's up to you. I'm not comfortable doing it without pins. Just not comfortable because I got a feeling it's gonna shift under there or you know move the slightest is done. Hi Wanda.
my messed up block is perfect. So, finish this one. We have that one. And these all line up perfectly if you had to line them all up. They would line up perfectly. I'm going to give a brush and get some of the lint threads off that. Wow. we got a nice stack going on here. And I need 42 of these. So what I did, if you look at the outer border on all of mine, I did one with the dark, with the light center. The next one I did with the dark center and a light center. Dark outer, light inner, light inner, dark outer, light outer, dark inner. So you can see they all go in sequence. So I've been doing, and that's the way I stacked them too. To have the light and the dark, the dark, well, I put the light and the dark there. Those two are the same. I'll, I'll rearrange them. There's the light and dark. Light and dark. Dark and light. Light and dark. Light and dark. Basically, that's the kind of order I'm putting them on my quilt. They feel kind of cool. They really do. All right. That's going to be it for my live show. I know I haven't been live for very long, but I'm going to go put supper on. It is late, but Chase just went home, so that's the time I could go live. Maybe when I come back tomorrow, I'll be a lot earlier tomorrow. And I could start on a tote. Or the pillows. Whatever. Whatever you guys want. Tote, pillows, you name it. I can go do it. But that's all I can do for, for now, guys. So I'm going to make supper and I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Alright. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope you guys make the pineapple squares, and if you do, post them in the group so I can see your your um, squares. I want to see them, especially if you do colored ones, because when they do the pineapples, they usually do all these are different colors. This is a different pa pattern, color, different one, different one, different one. Every single one of these, except for the solid, you got to leave a solid in there. They have to stay solid. But the rest of them are all different. I left mine in each group the same color. But that's not how you have to do yours. You can do yours all mess, mixed up and messed up with different scraps. And boy, do I have a lot of scraps coming. But I still want to wait. I don't want to touch my scrap bin yet. I don't have enough variety in there to be happy yet. <laughs> okay, guys, have yourself a great night. And I'll see you all tomorrow morning. God bless.